Hi everyone, welcome back to my page. Last week I did a video on fear of your parents' disapproval and this week I wanted to cover the opposite of that. What happens when we have regrets when it comes to our parents and things that we kind of do on autopilot and get on with our lives and then before we know it it's a little too late to make an effort with our parents and they're getting older and then this regret and fear sets in that we haven't done enough and we haven't done our best with them. So before it's too late, before it gets to that stage, we need to be aware of the impact that we have on our parents, ways that we can love them, ways that we can keep them happy and be appreciative for all the things that they've done for us, especially people like myself who have migrated to the UK and came here as refugees and therefore our parents had to really sacrifice so much to get us to a safe place and give us a better life and for that I'm forever grateful but that may not come across in the way that I speak to my parents or my actions and I feel like I, we all need to make a conscious effort to make them feel good and honor them. If you haven't been to my page, I'm Hamasa. I look at personal development as well as mental and emotional well-being and just day-to-day -day issues. Please do subscribe to my page so that you're up to date with all my weekly content. The reason I wanted to do this video this week, I had a chat with my mom and she always advises me on my work and it's always nice for me to speak to her and I'm very appreciative, but I know that I don't come across that way all the time, especially because there are certain things that I do habitually is just who I am. And that may or may not come across well to my parent. And I sometimes forget that. And so I need to make a conscious effort of that. So when I was speaking to her, I was asking her thoughts on it. And I thought it would be nice to tie in with what I discussed last week, which is um, the fear of their disapproval and having this sort of gap in communication and understanding and where parents give you ultimatum. But, you know, the flip side of that is that we all, of course, want to love, honor, appreciate, cherish and respect our parents, especially, you know, from my culture, it's, it's very, the, the family unit and family values play an important part and to have a good connection and a relationship with them is very important. But also at this, uh, with the same token, that could sometimes be like quite um, overtaking your life. It becomes like the priority and a chore and an expectation at times that you're not even able to deliver, but you're expected to. So then you start resenting and you start kind of moving away from family or being quite cut and abrupt and short and not have the patience for them. And then they get sick and they get old and you realize that I don't have that much time left with them and I really need to make the most of my time with them, appreciate them. Like for me, my parents, my mom and dad are the most important people in my life. I love them dearly, but do I really show them that? Do they understand how much I appreciate them? Do they understand how impactful their opinions and thoughts are to me? Do they understand how much I honor and value them? And I'm sure, and I know, <laughs> speaking to my mom, that I don't always do that. Because think of it when you get a phone call from a friend and when you get a phone call from your mom. For me personally, I pick up the phone and I'm like, hi mom, yes, yes, no, I didn't do that. Why are you asking? Okay, fine. And it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. All right, I'm gonna go now. Conversation goes like, I've heard what you had to say. I said my piece. I'm short, I'm to the point, I'm busy. But when a friend calls, I'm always a lot more friendlier. I'm a lot more patient, I'm chatty, I'm cheerful. And it's things like that that really make a difference and because my mom is aware that my personality is a little bit fiery is quite outspoken i speak my mind i'm a sagittarius so i'm very unfiltered um i'm very brutally honest and that's not necessarily why my mom sometimes calls to vent to me she just calls because she wants me to be a good listener and a good daughter. She trusts me, she relies on me, and I need to deliver that. But my responses and things could sometimes be quite short and cut. So 
knowing how to communicate to my mom or use the right tone with her is very important for me to be conscious of. Because when I do, do make that effort and she could see that I'm putting that in, that alone is enough for her to see. Like she loves me enough. She knows me more than anyone I could ever imagine. So she knows that when I consciously make an effort and I consciously am aware of things that I do habitually and just because of how I am that I'm making an effort not to do that towards her is enough for her to understand that I'm trying to make an effort to make her feel loved, welcomed, respected and all those things that I'm trying to make her happy and that's something that I need to be conscious of because in my head or what I think I do like for me to appreciate my mom and want her to be good and feel good is like I give her very expensive skincare, I buy her nice perfumes, or I take her to a lunch, and all those things are good and great, and I know that she appreciates and likes it, but it's no good me doing that if I'm constantly distracted on my phone, or I'm not present in the conversation, or I'm dismissive, or I'm rolling my eyes when she tells me stuff that she's already told me, because my mom does that. She tells me a story, and then she tells me seven times again, and that's because she just wants to call and have a chit-chat with me. It's bonding for her. But for me, it's like, yeah, I know you told me this. Like, But for her, it's just her way of venting, and I need to honor that, because that's all she wants from me, a listening ear. And that's the least I could do for her, like not to lose my patience with her. So, I, And I know that my friends do that. I know my brother does that. And it's something that we could be very regretful of if we don't take that time now while we still have them around to, to let them know how we feel and to make a conscious effort to make them feel this love that we genuinely do feel but just not express or we're not expressing. Because it's, you know, I've grown up and I have a very great different relationship with my parents and I'm very happy with that. And even though I've worked on myself a lot, I know that sometimes I also lose my patience and I could be very kind of dismissive and cold and not very loving. And it's not a good thing and I need to make a conscious effort and be weary of it and find things that she finds enjoyable not what I find enjoyable me getting dressed up and going to lunch with my mom is something I really like but like I said if my attitude's bad towards her or I'm not present in the moment with her she's not really going to enjoy that lunch or want to be there if I'm making her feel unwelcome it's the same thing when it comes to us and our friends, like, oh, it's not what you said, it's how you said it. So with that same token, we need to have that same sentiment and mindset when it comes to our parents. That it's not what we say and do, it's how we do it that makes a huge difference in how they feel around us. And in my previous video, I talk about it's all good for parents to be concerned about us and care for us and ask us things, but never control us. And I again repeat this here, that as long as your parents are not like hurtful towards you, they're not abusive emotionally, they're not neglectful, and you're aware of the things that you need to do, things that you need to take the responsibility to improve the relationship and not just always blame, 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 then that's all they really want. They want us to be fulfilled, happy, complete, and communicate that to them and let them know that we're in a good place, we're okay and also love them and respect them and honor them, honor what they're saying, but not necessarily always do as they say, or always take their advice as word of God and there's no other way about it and my parents said no, it's a no. No, listen to what they have to say, understand why it is a no, what are their concerns that they're saying no to you? And once you understand that, reason with them, communicate to them, talk to them, explain to them, because the more you hide, the more you lie, the more there's a gap, there's a breakdown in communication, and the repercussions of that lie coming out is a lot more severe than you giving them that respect and honor and choice to tell them how you feel or what you want. Even small things like going to a friend's birthday, we've all done it, I've done it, I've lied about, oh, I'm going here to see this friend, but I was going to some other friend's birthday party and I never said it. Most times I got caught and I got in a lot of trouble and it resulted in me not being able to go out further and more lies and just a mess. My parents didn't trust me and I resented them and felt like they never let me do anything. My parents hate me, they don't want me to have a social life. No, I, weren't, I really went around it the wrong way 
there were reasons for that. We had just moved here. My parents didn't understand the society, community, the dynamic, birthdays, this, that. They were worried. They were concerned. So the concern turned to control. And I rebelled and I resented and I hated. But understanding that if I explained to them and they explained to me and there was some sort of compromise in communication, it probably would have been resolved and moved on and I would have probably been able to attend that birthday, even if it was for a few hours. But I didn't do that. And so the repercussions of that were a lot more severe and it took me a lot longer to build that trust to have a more normal teenage life and childhood. So I always like I had this big grudge and resent for a long time against my parents and like all over silliness. That happens when you're a teenager anyway, but when there is a big breakdown in trust and communication and cultural issues and societal issues, it becomes even more difficult for us to understand and be honest. So like be open about things but try as much as you can to to build that trust by communicating openly by talking to them by listening and honoring them like i said but not necessarily like doing exactly as they say give your reasons give explanations give your argument be an adult about it be mature about it they will come to terms there will be some sort of compromise and you know it doesn't have to create animosity or resentment or a big gap and distance so that's why like the time that we have with them is so short-lived is it should be appreciated i see my mom with my grandmother i see myself with my mom like with my dad and you know i don't want to live in regret i don't want to feel bad for like little things that i could be conscious of and make a huge difference in my relationship or how my parents live feel around me so I too need to work on this, I know that, but being aware of it is the first step. And if you too can apply these little changes and be conscious of, yeah, I may take my mom out and get, take them on expensive holidays, but am I delivering that in the correct way? Am I saying the right things? Am I making her really feel welcome and wanted and appreciated there? Or am I doing it to just shut them up that like, look, I've done this for you, can you now leave me alone? Because they know us better than anyone, so they can sense that. We don't even have to say anything. They read us like a book and we know that. So, you know, the more you're making yourself aware and not faking it, seeing why you're so unhappy in yourself, where you're projecting and other things, where that, does that resent come from? Work on that because if you're a happy, wholesome, content person, then the people around you feel that as well because that's the energy and that's the love that you you know, emulate from, from you to other people. That's like, that's what you're pouring into other people, a positive, proactive, happy, content energy. But if you're constantly snappy, tired, and that all comes out on a parent, then, you know, the issue is in you. And you do need to be conscious of that. And you need to see that, you know what, because I have some other issues and I'm stressed with work and I'm tired of my relationship or my kids are stressing me out, it's not justifiable to take that out on your parent and just expect them to understand because they're mom and dad. So I hope that you guys found this helpful. You know, it's always good to look at both sides of the spectrum and understand that the things that we are responsible for and the things that we can do to improve our relationships with our parents. It's not always good to like point a finger and just always say it's their fault and their mindset is dated and they don't get me. Well, have you tried getting them and understanding them? So if you guys have enjoyed this, please share it with someone who may need it. Please like and comment on this video. Share your experiences of things that you've done or realized and or you regret and wish that you had done so that other people can learn from it and not make the same mistakes. Um, please do subscribe to my page and I'll see you guys here next week. Thank you so much for watching. Mwah.